Hello again, dear YouTubers around the world, and welcome to, back to my main channel on YouTube, the only one which I'm actively using now to upload videos. This year, 2021, as we know, will end officially at midnight on December the 31st, 2021. It has been just like many years preceding it, a year of momentous events. There have been a number of elections and transitions of power or re-elections, at least according to the official results of the incumbent presidents uh, and prime ministers and other government leaders. There have also been a number of prominent deaths. There have been also a number of riots and demonstrations, not the least against the vaccine mandates which are designed to gradually slow down and eventually defeat the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, in at least several countries, there have been coups, mostly in Africa. And then there has been political unrest. At least one uh, government leader in the world has been assassinated during this year, which soon will pass into the uh, steadily expanding annals of history. So I'm going to now use several news sources in order to provide you, dear fellow YouTubers, especially you who are interested, analytically and intellectually interested in the current events and their wider importance, and also want to draw power in the current events and the more historical events, and make reasonable um, estimates or guesses of what will happen in the future, for example, in the soon starting year 2022. So this video is for you and please be patient. I try not to be too long-winded, but I try to provide you with a sufficiently comprehensive account of what has happened on the world's six inhabited continents and the one continent which is still mostly uninhabited, Antarctica. So let us start this review from Wikipedia. On January the 1st, 2021, the African Continental Free Trade Area came into effect. It was created by the African Continental Free Trade Agreement among 54 of the 55 African Union nations. And this free trade area, I must admit that this is the first time I have heard of it, but I'm glad that I have heard of it. Is the largest one in the world in terms of the number of participating countries since the World Trade Organization was formed. Accra, Ghana in Western Africa serves as the secretariat of the African Free Trade or Continental Free Trade Agreement and was commissioned and handed over to the African Union, which is the political organization of the independent countries of Africa, by the president of Ghana, Nana Akufo Addo, on August the 17th, 2020, in Accra. The agreement was brokered by the African Union. It was signed by 44 of its 55 member states' representatives in Kigali, Rwanda, Eastern Africa, on March the 21st, 2018. The agreement at first requires members to remove tariffs or import and export duties from 90% of their goods, allowing free access to commodities, goods and services across Africa. <clears throat> the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa estimates that the agreement will boost intra-African trade by 52% by 2022. The proposal was set to come into force 30 days after ratification by 22 of the states whose representatives, whether presidents or prime ministers, has, had signed the agreement. <coughs> On April the 2nd, 2019, the Gambia in Western Africa be uh, became the 22nd state to ratify the agreement. And on April 29th, the disputed Saharawi Republic in um, Western Sahara 
to the south of um, Morocco, which still claims sovereignty over it, made the 22nd deposit of instruments of ratification. So the agreement went into force on May the 30th, 2019, and entered its operational phase following a summit on July the 7th, 2019. So the general objectives of this trade free trade agreement are to create a single market deepening Africa's economic to establish a liberalized market through multiple rounds of negotiation to aid or help the movement of capital and people across Africa, facilitating, uh, facilitating investment. This, by the way, is crucial because Africa is, despite its economic, political, social, cultural, educational and other forms of development, still by far the poorest one financially among the world's six regularly inhabited continents. Uh, I have um, southern and certain um, western, central, and eastern, especially island or coastal countries of Africa, are reasonably prosperous. There are no super rich countries in Africa, contrary to, for example, Asia, and especially then, of course, Europe, uh, Oceania, and uh, North America. But there are several reasonably prosperous countries in Africa. But then, by even the African standards, uh, many Western and Eastern African countries are we can say shockingly poor still. And yet what really amazes me about the African people is how happy and forward-looking and resilient and patient they are, despite all the calamities that unfortunately are afflicting. <clears throat> For example, they're rich and they, uh, like uh, resource rich and culturally and linguistically and ethnically and racially rich uh, and even socially rich uh, continent. To move to security and finally to resolve challenges of multiple and overlapping memberships. So we go on in our new summary of the soon to end to be ended year 2021. On January the 4th, a British judge blocked the extradition of the Australian-born internet activist and the founder of the WikiLeaks uh, website, which claims to keep the governments open and to expose massive cases of corruption between various government officials and business leaders and other uh, influencers all around the world. Among its most controversial publications have been the so-called Panama Papers, which actually led to the resignation of the Icelandic Prime Minister in Northern Europe some years ago. Assange has been, or was for many years, inside the Ecuadorian Embassy in London, uh, Britain, before surrendering to the authorities. So. On January the 4th, 2021, a British judge blocked his extradition to the United States where he faces charges, um, while Mexico, interestingly enough, the United States' southern neighbor, or one of them actually, offered him political asylum. On the same day, the border between Qatar and Saudi Arabia reopened, and then tragically on January the 6th, Tens of thousands of fanatical supporters of the outgoing and defeated U.S. President Donald Trump uh, converged on Washington, D.C. Of course, thousands of them had already uh, arrived to Washington, D.C. at least one or two days earlier. They had been urged to go there by Trump himself, by Steve Bannon, one of Trump's former assistants, and by a number of other populist right-wing slash far-right um, politically, economically, and digitally, and socially, in, and even culturally and religiously 
influential people. The tragic results were the totally unnecessary deaths of five people, four protesters, one of whom died directly uh, because she was uh, defensively shot in the neck and fatally without the intention of killing her, of course, uh, for trying to climb into the speaker's lobby inside the congressional building on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. She was Mrs. Ashley Babbitt, uh, a former pilot of the United States Air Force, who had veered gradually in the 2010s towards the far-right and populist uh, forms of politics, and who was a fanatical supporter of Donald Trump. There is still an online video um, where she taped herself walking towards the U.S. Capitol. She claimed, without citing any sources, that there were an estimated over 3 million protesters uh, in Washington, D.C. And then uh, he, she claimed that on the ground, all you could see were black, uh, red and white, uh, I'm sorry, blue, red and white uh, patriots, Trump supporters, and so forth. As Dr. Todd Grande, an American psychologist who has provided hundreds of uh, psychoanalyses or estimates of various people, especially people who have been in trouble with the law, particularly in the United States itself, um, concluded that Mrs. Babbitt uh, had a kind of personality or probably had a kind of personality uh, where she had these fixed ideas and it was extremely difficult for her uh, to accept the possibility that she could be wrong in her convictions. Uh, and she, difficult, she definitely had trouble controlling her temper because on two occasions in the late 2010s, uh, a peace order or restraining order had had to be issued um, against her. In the first incident, or actually series of incidents, uh, she had three times intentionally bumped her car against or into that of another woman who happened to be dating her boyfriend and then not only that she had chased that woman through the streets of some districts of uh, Baltimore Maryland so she died directly as a result of this riot for trying to break into an area where she knew she was not supposed to enter and then another Trump supporter died of a drug overdose two others died of stress-induced heart attacks, and then one of the Capitol or Washington, D.C. police officers who had tried to restrain these uh, fanatical supporters of Donald Trump died of a stress-induced heart attack in his office. Despite their intimidating tactics and violence, the United States Congress voted in both houses uh, to accept and ratify the election results, according to which uh, Joseph Biden really defeated Donald Trump. As a result of these uh, acts of violence, the vote count was delayed by several hours. The event is still classified as a domestic terrorist attack and drew international condemnation. Also, uh, there is still that Democrat-led uh, committee or commission investigating this incident. There are two Republican members, two courageous Republicans who have not only um, accepted fully the fact that Trump lost the election, but also consider him a dangerous individual, politically and socially, and uh, are, believe that it is vital to investigate thoroughly what really happened and to what extent Trump was directly responsible for instigating this riot. Indirectly responsible, of course, he was because he essentially declared before the riot became violent that uh, these supporters of his had to be brave and had to essentially, even though he didn't use the words, uh, essentially scare enough members of the U.S. Congress to decertify Biden's election so that 
the U.S. House of Representatives could, by voting uh, as state delegations, overturn the election results and re-elect him as the U.S. president. Then, on January the 10th, the North Korean dictator, Mr. Kim Jong-un, was elected as the general secretary of the ruling Workers' Party of Korea, which, of course, is the uh, Communist Party there, inheriting the title from his late father, Kim Jong-il, who died in December 2011. So this December, Kim Jong-un has marked his 10th anniversary as the North Korean dictator. On January the 14th, 2021, Ugandan, the Ugandan general election was held, and according to the Electoral Commission, President Yoweri Museveni, who has ruled the country since 1986, won with over 58% of the vote. On January the 15th, the Lao People's Revolutionary Party, which is uh, the Communist Party of Laos in Southeastern Asia, elected Mr. Thong Loon or Thong Loon Sisulith as its new general secretary for a five year term, replacing retiring chief uh, Bunhang Vorachith. On the same day, According to the official figures, the global death toll from COVID-19 passed to million. It's now something like five and a half million officially, but many health experts claim that these uh, figures are notably understated. On January the 24th, 2021, the Portuguese incumbent president, Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa, was re-elected. And on January the 31st, Nguyen or Nguyen Phu Trong was re-elected for a third five-year term as the General Secretary of Vietnam's Communist Party. On February the 1st, a coup d'etat in Myanmar removed the government leader, essentially Prime Minister Mrs. Aung San Suu Kyi, and restored military rule, leading to widespread demonstrations across uh, Myanmar, where at least over 1,000 people have already passed away. On the same day, Kosovo, a partly disputed state uh, in southeastern Europe on the Balkan Peninsula, officially established diplomatic ties with Israel and announced plans to move its embassy to Jerusalem or to open an embassy in Jerusalem. On February the 9th, a joint World Health Organization China investigation into the source of the ongoing uh, COVID virus outbreak concluded, investigators <clears throat> considered a Wuhan laboratory leak. Wuhan was the only city where officially, or the first city where officially this pandemic began in China, uh, to be extremely unlikely with a natural reservoir in bats being a more likely origin. On the same day, the United Arab Emirates uncrewed HOPE spacecraft became the first Arabian mission to successfully enter orbit around Mars. <clears throat> On February the 19th, the United States officially rejoined the pro-climate uh, protection Paris Agreement 107 days after leaving it. On February the 24th, the COVAX vaccine sharing initiative delivered its first vaccines, delivering 600,000 doses for healthcare workers in Ghana. On March the 6th, Pope Francis, who is the worldwide leader of the Roman Catholic Church, met Grand Ayatollah Ali Sistani in Najaf, Iraq. It was the first ever meeting between a Pope and a Grand Ayatollah, who of course is uh, high-ranking Muslim leader. On March the 17th, in the Dutch parliamentary elections to the lower house, the second chamber of the House of Representatives took place. The main ruling party, People's Party for Freedom and Democracy, led by longtime Prime Minister Mark Rutte, 
People's Party for Freedom and Democracy, the centrist Liberal Democrats of 66, and the two Christian Democratic parties, the Christian Democratic Appeal and the somewhat more conservative Christian Union, announced that they had reached at last a coalition agreement. A total of 17 political parties won one or more seats in the elections to the Dutch House of Representatives. Um, that uh, legislature two thirds of 1%. And it's the same vote threshold for the individual political parties and for the electoral alliances. And then on March the 19th, North Korea broke its diplomatic ties with Malaysia due to its citizens being extradited to the United States to face money laundering charges. Malaysian authorities ordered North Korean officials to leave the country in 48 hours. On March the 23rd, the Israeli general elections took place the fourth Knesset or parliamentary elections in two years. And in those elections, the incumbent Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's right-wing Likud party kept its position as the uh, largest party in the Knesset with 30 seats out of 120, so exactly one quarter. Followed by Yesh Atid, the Yesh Atid party of Yair Lapid with 17 seats, the conservative religious Jewish Shas party by led by Arya Derry, nine seats, then the centrist and liberal political alliance Blue and White, uh, led by Benny Gantz, uh, with eight seats, and then the right-wing alliance of Yamina, led by Naftali Bennett, with seven seats. On April the 2nd, uh, the US-led Military and Defense Alliance, NATO, or North Atlantic Treaty Organization, against sending any troops aid to Ukraine, one of the uh, several Western neighbors of Russia in Europe, amid reports of a large Russian military buildup on its borders. And still, as the year 2021 draws to its close, there is a danger of some military conflict between Russia and the Ukraine, and by extension between Russia and NATO, because Russia uses as its excuse for the troop concert, uh, concentration on its uh, border to the Ukraine, uh, its opposition to the further eastward expansion of NATO. Uh, the Ukraine was one of the, yeah, was the second largest uh, Soviet socialist republic before the uh, Soviet Union officially broke up uh, 30 years ago. On April the 4th, the first of three Bulgarian parliamentary elections of this soon-to-be-ended year took place with an indecisive result. On the same day, over 270 people were killed in Indonesia and East Timor, so two southeastern Asian countries after Cyclone Saroja struck East Nusa Tenggara and the island of Timor. On April the 11th, Peru in South America held a general election with uh, the left wing, leading left wing presidential candidate, former school teacher, <clears throat> Mr. Pedro Castillo, and his left wing Free Peru or Peru Libre party winning an incredibly close election. Uh, the single chamber Congress or uh, National Parliament of Peru has many parties, none of which is even close to a majority. <clears throat> Curiously enough, Peru has a president, two vice presidents, and even a prime minister who is a cabinet leader. However, the president is both the head of state and the head of government. <clears throat> On the same day, Iran accused Israel of nuclear terrorism and vowed revenge after a large explosion destroyed the internal power system of the 
Natan's uranium enrichment plant. Um, on April the 17th, the official global death toll from COVID-19 surpassed 3 million. On April the 20th, Mr. Idris Deby, who had been leading Chad, a very poor country in Central and Eastern Africa since 1990, was killed in clashes with rebel forces. The constitution was suspended under transitional military council was established to govern the country for 18 months. Chad is, interestingly enough, a former colony of France. And France is actively involved often when there are uh, violent incidents, especially in Western Africa, most of whose countries were former, uh, were, were once uh, French colonies. <clears throat> On April the 23rd, the Union of European Football Associations, or UEFA, announced that due to a lack of guarantees regarding spectators caused by the ongoing pandemic, the Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland, would be removed as a tournament host for the UEFA Euro uh, Tournament 2020. On April the 25th, Albania, a small country in southeastern Europe, held its parliamentary elections. <clears throat> The ruling socialist party of Prime Minister Edi Rama retained its majority with 74 seats out of 140. And then the center-right electoral alliance of the Democratic Party and uh, center-right right wing and then AN not quite sure what that means. Of Mr. Luzim Basha came second with 59 seats. <clears throat> On April the 28th, at least 55 people were killed and nearly 50,000 more were displaced or forced to flee their homes after one of the most serious clashes in Central Asia following border disputes between Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. On the same day, the European Union approved the European Union a British Trade and Cooperation Agreement governing the relationship between the European Union and Britain, which left <clears throat> the European Union in January 2020, the so-called Brexit. On the same day, protesters rallied in major Colombian cities. Colombia is another country in South America against increased taxes and healthcare reforms proposed by President Ivan Duque Marquez, resulting in police violence and deaths of dozens of protesters. And uh, those clashes were condemned by the United Nations and Human Rights Watch. On April the 29th, uh, the number of confirmed COVID-19 human cases exceeded 150 million worldwide. While the China National uh, Space Administration launched the first module of its Tiangong space station named Tianhe, starting a two-year effort to build the station in orbit. On May the 2nd, the SpaceX Crew-1 mission ended, returning four crew members of Expedition 64 and 65 <coughs> to Earth from the International Space Station aboard Crew Dragon Resilience. On May the 7th, the World Health Organization gave emergency use listing to the Sinopharm BIBP COVID-19 vaccine, the first non-Western vaccine to be <laughs> Excuse me. 
Then <clears throat> on May the 11th, Israel hit the Gaza Strip, which is a Palestinian controlled <clears throat> narrow piece of land between Israel and Egypt in the Middle East with airstrikes as Hamas, one of the uh, Arab terrorist organizations whose eventual goal is the replacement of Israel with a Palestinian dominated Arab state, <clears throat> increased rocket fire. This happened after Israel began displacing Palestinians in the Sheikh Jamaa or Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood of East Jerusalem, which is one of the territories disputed between the Israelis and Palestinians. <clears throat> On May the 20th, um, following international pressure and nearly 250 deaths, Israel agreed to a ceasefire deal to end the brief border war with Gaza militants, effective the next day or May the 21st at 2 o'clock in the morning local time. <clears throat> On May the 26th, uh, Shell, a well-known Dutch based in international oil and gas company, although it's a multinational corporation as well, became the first company to be legally mandated to align its carbon emissions with the 2015 Paris Climate Accord, following a landmark court ruling in the Netherlands. On the same day, the Syrian presidential election was held, despite the fact that the Syrian civil war, which erupted uh, due to first wave of Arab Spring revolts in 2011 still hasn't fully ended. <clears throat> According to the official results, the incumbent authoritarian president, Mr. Bashir or Bashar al-Assad, was re-elected with over 95% of the vote. On June the 1st, the World Health Organization gave emergency use listing to the Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine, which then became the second non-Western vaccine to be authorized. On June the 2nd, the Israeli presidential election was held and was won by Isaac Herzog. <clears throat> uh, in Israel, which is a parliamentary democracy, the president has mostly ceremonial powers. However, he or she has the right to nominate and appoint the prime minister and the government. The prime minister is, according to the rules of parliamentarism, the executive leader of Israel. <clears throat> in order to remove, uh, and uh, the president, in order to guarantee him um, a source of continuity in power, is elected for a seven year term. and re-election is not possible. In order to remove the uh, long-serving and controversial right-wing Prime Minister of Israel, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu from power, Naftali Bennett agreed to form a coalition with the Israeli opposition as a rotation government that would come, into, uh, come to take effect after 11 days. On June the 5th, the group of seven uh, major industrialized countries agreed on a global minimum corporate tax rate of 15% intended to prevent tax avoidance by some of the world's biggest multinationals. On June the 9th, the 2021 Mongolian presidential election was held and uh, the left-wing Mongolian People's Party's presidential candidate, Mr. Uhnagin uh, Hurel Such, received 72% of the valid vote. Mongolia is a semi-presidential republic where the president um, has some important powers, including the right to appoint the prime minister. 
the president is elected for four years, just like the parliament. On the same day, the Legislative Assembly of El Salvador, a country in Central America, passed legislation to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender in the country, and thus El Salvador became the first country to adopt the cryptocurrency alongside the US dollar. On June the 11th became the UEFA Euro 2020 men's football or soccer tournament hosted by 11 different countries because of the pandemic. It was won by Italy after beating England on penalties on July the 11th. The 47th G7 summit was held in Britain from June the 11th to June the 13th with topics of discussion including the ongoing pandemic, climate change, and the corporate taxation of multinationals. On June the 13th became the, uh, or started the Copa America uh, football or soccer tournament uh, between various South American countries, hosted because of the ongoing pandemic behind closed doors by Brazil. It was won on July the 10th by Argentina. Also on June the 13th, Benjamin Netanyahu, the longest serving Prime Minister of Israel from 1996 to 1999 and again from 2000. Uh, I'll to check that. 2009 to 2021 was voted out of office. <clears throat> Naftali Bennett and Yair Lapid were sworn in as Prime Minister of Israel and as alternate Prime Minister of Israel, respectively. On June the 20th, Brazil became the second country in the world to surpass half a million human deaths from the COVID-19 virus. On the same day, the Armenian parliamentary elections were held in Western Asia. Acting Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan won that snap election with his civil contract party gaining 54% of the vote. <clears throat> On June the 20th, uh, in the Tigray Regional Civil War in Ethiopia, Eastern Africa, the Tigray Defense Force seized the Tigrayan capital, Mekele, shortly after the Ethiopian government declared a cease fire. On June the 29th, uh, the number of COVID-19 vaccinations administered worldwide exceeded 3 billion. On July the 7th, the authoritarian Haitian president, Mr. Jovenel Moise, was shot to death at his home while First Lady Martin Moise was injured and the couple's children were able to hide elsewhere in the home. According to news reports, over 20 men almost all of them from Colombia and two of them from Haiti were responsible for the assassination of the Haitian president. <clears throat> On July the 11th, thousands of Cubans, most of them young, attended a rare anti-government protest in San Antonio de los Baños to protest the increased food and medicine shortages brought on by the pandemic. Since Cuba is a communist dictatorship, public protests against the government are rare. On the same day, Moldova, a small country in southeastern Europe, held a parliamentary election with the Party of Action and Solidarity, gaining a majority. Bulgaria held the middle one of its three parliamentary elections that were organized in 2021, with the party, Populist Party, there is such a people <coughs> winning it, however, without a majority. On July the 12th, heavy rain caused flooding in the border region of Germany and Belgium, so in Western and Central Europe, resulting in 229 deaths, including 184 in Germany, 42 in Belgium, uh, with one person still missing there, and two in Romania, interestingly enough. The event was attributed to a slowed jet stream caused by climate change. <clears throat> And then on July the 19th, leftist school teacher 
Pedro Castillo was confirmed very narrowly as the president of Peru, being only one quarter of a percent ahead of his right-wing populist challenger and the daughter of the former authoritarian and dictatorial president of Peru, Alberto Fujimori. The lady's name, the daughter's name is Keiko Fujimori or Fujimori. So the uh, challenges to the official election results took over one month to resolve. On July the 21st, the International Olympic Committee awarded Brisbane in Australia the right to host the 2032 Summer Olympics. And the delayed 2020 Summer Olympics were held in Tokyo, Japan, from July the 23rd to August the 8th. They had been postponed because of the pandemic. And because of the pandemic, there were notably few spectators in the Olympics. On July the 23rd, the Court of Appeal of Samoa, a country in Oceania, considered the swearing in of Ms. Fiamme Naomi Mataafa and her government as constitutional, ending a three month constitutional crisis. Uh, Prime Minister Mataafa has a single vote majority in the Samoan parliament. On July the 25th, Tunisian President Kais Sayed, who had been democratically elected, I think, in October 2019, formally took power or seized power in the country, suspending the parliament and dismissing the prime minister. Um, on August the 9th, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released the first part of its sixth assessment report, which concluded that the effects of human-caused climate change are now widespread, rapid, and intensified. <clears throat> on August the 12th, 2021, the Zambian general election was held, and the opposition's main presidential candidate, Mr. Hakainde Kichilema, was able to uh, defeat the president, Edgar Lungu, who after some hesitation uh, admitted his defeat and congratulated Mr. Hichilema, who triumphed over him with the 14th, a 7.2 magnitude on the Richter scale, earthquakes killing over 2,100 people. The Taliban captured Kabul, Afghanistan's government, uh, Afghanistan's capital, sorry, and the Afghan government surrendered to the Taliban on August the 15th, almost exactly 20 years after the war on terror was launched in uh, October 2001 by the then U.S. President George W. Bush. On August the 30th, the United Nations Environment Program announced that leaded patrol in road vehicles, patrol is uh, the British word for gasoline, has been phased out <clears throat> globally 100 years after its introduction. On the same day, the United States withdrew its last remaining troops from Hamid Karzai International Airport, Kabul, ending almost exactly 20 years of operations in Afghanistan. On September the 5th, uh, Guinea's longtime authoritarian president, Mr. Alpha Conde, was detained by an elite military unit led by a former French legionnaire, L Lieutenant Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya, claiming to have seized power. While this coup d'etat has been condemned internationally, the military junta has refused yet to organize new elections or to surrender power. On September the 13th, the Norwegian parliamentary elections were held with the left-wing Labour Party or Social Democrats <clears throat> winning them and its leader, Mr. Jonas Gar Støre, then formed a new government in October with the Centre Party and the Socialist Left Party.
On September the 15th, a trilateral security agreement between Australia, Britain, and the United States was formed to counter the influence of Asia, influence of China, sorry, in the Asia Pacific region. This included enabling Australia to build its first nuclear powered submarine fleet. On the same day, several ministers of the Argentinian left wing president Alberto Fernandez's cabinet resigned, federal cabinet because Argentina is a federal republic, uh, after the government's defeat in the primary elections, triggering a political crisis in the country. On September the 19th, the Russian federal parliamentary elections were held with the ruling United Russia Party of the authoritarian dictatorial president Vladimir Putin winning another majority, but interestingly enough, losing 19 seats in the Duma, which is the lower house of the federal parliament. <clears throat> the elections actually took three days, just like earlier in the year in the Netherlands because of the pandemic. <clears throat> On September the 20th, the Liberal Party's leader and incumbent Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau won a third term and the election results were virtually the same as they had been in the October 2021 Canadian federal parliamentary elections with the Liberals holding on to their plurality, uh, winning the largest number of seats but not winning an overall majority. The Conservatives remained as the country's uh, official opposition or second largest political party. On September the 25th, the Icelandic parliamentary elections were held. And um, the incumbent left wing prime minister, Mr. Mrs. Katrin Jakobs Dochtir, was able to form a new government uh, because her um, government retained its majority. So she continues to govern the country uh, with the center-right independence party and the center-right program party being her coalition partners. Okay. On September the 26th, were held the German federal parliamentary elections to renew the German federal parliament's lower house, the Bundestag. In those elections, the Social Democrats, led by Finance Minister Olaf Scholz, were able to narrow the defeat, the outgoing federal chancellor or prime minister Angela Merkel's Christian Democrats. But because no party won more than about one quarter of the vote, and because of the mixed uh, member proportional electoral system after lengthy negotiations in early December 2021 a so-called traffic light coalition was formed between the social democrats the liberal pro-business and pro-european union free democrats and the environmentalist greens <clears throat> on october the first 2021, the delayed 2020 World Exposition or World's Fair was uh, begun officially in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. <clears throat> On October the 3rd, the International Consortium of, the, of Investigative Journalists and assorted, assorted Media Partners published a set of 11.9 million documents leaked from 14 financial services companies known as the Pandora Papers, revealing offshore financial activities that involve multiple current and former world leaders. On October the 4th, Mr. Fumio Kishida became the 100th Prime Minister of Japan, succeeding the unpopular Yoshihide Suga, who only had been in office for one year. <clears throat> On October the 6th, the World Health Organization endorsed the first malaria vaccine. On October the 8th and 9th, the 2021 Czech legislative elections were held with the main opposition coalition alliance of SPOLU and pirates and mayors gaining a legislative majority. 
the Czech Republic, just like most European uh, republics, is a parliamentary democracy where the president has limited power and minister is the executive leader. <clears throat> On October the 9th, the center-right federal chancellor or prime minister of Austria, Sebastian Kurz, announced his resignation as a result of a corruption probe launched against him. On October the 24th, the 2021 Uzbek presidential elections were held with the incumbent president, Mr. Shavkat Mirziyoyev, officially winning just over 80% of the vote. On October the 31st, the Japanese parliamentary elections were held with the new Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and the Liberal Democratic Party <clears throat> and its coalition partner Komeito or the Clean Government Party uh, keeping their parliamentary majority. From October the 31st <clears throat> to November the 13th, the 2021 United Nations Climate Change Conference, uh, usually called COP26, was held in Glasgow, Scotland, Britain, after being postponed due to the pandemic. A deal was signed by world leaders, which included a phase down of unabated coal power, a 30% cut in methane emissions by 2030, plans to halt deforestation <clears throat> by 2030, and increased financial support for developing countries. On November the 1st, the number of recorded human deaths from this pandemic surpassed 5 million. On November the 3rd, the World Health Organization gave emergency use listing to the co-vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, the third non-Western vaccine to be authorized. <clears throat> on November the 14th, unprecedented rain caused by an atmospheric uh, river brought a series of floods to the U.S. Pacific Northwest. On the same day, the midterm Argentinian congressional elections were held and they were won by the opposition center-right electoral alliance, making the country's governing considerably more difficult for the uh, left-wing president, Alberto Fernandez. On the same day, the third and last 2021 parliamentary elections were held in Bulgaria. And they were won by an electoral alliance called We Continue the Change. The incumbent president, originally socialist, uh, Mr. Ruman Radev, was easily re-elected with over 66% of the vote. <clears throat> In the parliamentary and the first round of the presidential elections, only 38% of the eligible Bulgarian voters turned out. And on the second round of the presidential elections, the voter turnout sank to just 33%. On December the 13th, 2021, the Sebranje, or the National Assembly, meaning the Parliament of Bulgaria, approved the government of uh, four political parties formed by Prime Minister Kirill Petkov. Also, Bulgaria is a parliamentary democracy. <clears throat> On November the 21st, the Chilean general elections were held In them, may I wait for a while? The first round of the presidential elections was held 
27 of the 50 members of the Chilean Senate or the Upper House of Congress were elected uh, to an eight-year term, and all 155 members of the Chamber of Deputies, the lower house of the Chilean Congress, were elected to a four-year term, and all the 302 members of the regional boards were elected to serve a three-year term. On December the 19th, 2021, the leading left-wing candidate, uh, congressman or member of the Chamber of Deputies, Mr. Gabriel Boric, of the left-wing Social Convergence Party, um, defeated his far-right rival, businessman Jose Antonio Cast of the Republican Party. Boric received over 55% of the vote on the second round. He is scheduled to take office in uh, March 2022 and will become then, <clears throat> at the age of 36, the youngest Chilean president. <clears throat> Several parties won seats, or actually many parties won seats, um, at least partly because of the political electoral alliances and also uh, because of the uh, increasing fragmentation of Chilean politics in the Chilean congressional elections. In Chile, the presidents can serve a total of two separate terms, so the incumbent presidents cannot run for re-election, but former incumbent presidents can run to serve a second term. <coughs> On November the 25th, Britain became the fourth country in the world to sur surpass <coughs> 10 million COVID-19 cases, human cases, that is, after the United States, India, and Brazil. On November the 26th, the World Health Organization convened an emergency meeting in Geneva, Switzerland, Central Europe, amid concerns over <clears throat> Omicron, a highly mutated variant of COVID-19 first identified in South Africa that appears more infectious than Delta. <clears throat> On November the 30th, Barbados, a country in the Caribbean that is between uh, North America and South America and to the east of Central America, became a parliamentary republic while remaining a member of the British-led Commonwealth of Nations. The parliament elects the president and interestingly enough, the first uh, president of Barbados is a woman. <clears throat> On December the 6th, the United uh, States announced a diplomatic boycott of the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing, China, in response to China's poor human rights record. Several countries have already joined by this time uh, the diplomatic boycott. In other words, they will not send any government officials, whether presidents, prime ministers, cabinet ministers or secretaries or, or <coughs> even civil servants. <coughs> to those Olympics, while allowing their athletes to complete, compete in them. On December the 9th, a truck crash in Chiapas, Mexico, killed 55 migrants who were being smuggled from the neighboring Guatemala through Mexico to its border with the United States. On December the 9th and 10th, Summit for Democracy, a virtual summit, was hosted by the United States and attended by political leaders from over 100 countries. Its purpose, according to the incumbent US President, Joe Biden, <clears throat> was to renew democracy at home and confront autocracies abroad. On December the 12th, the third referendum on the independence of New Caledonia, a French overseas territory in Oceania was held, heavily boycotted by the pro-independence activists, uh, the turnout was low, only about 40%, and about 96% of those voting voted against <clears throat> independence. On the same day, Russia became the fifth country in the world to surpass 10 million human cases of COVID-19. On December the 17th, the World Health Organization gave emergency use listing to the Novavax COVID-19 vaccine. 
On December the 19th, not only the second round of the Chilean presidential elections was held, I already have announced its results, but on the same day, the Hong Kong legislative elections were held. Uh, they were heavily boycotted by the uh, city's pro-democracy opposition. And today, on December the 25th, uh, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration of the United States, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency, and even the Space Telescope Science Institute will launch <clears throat> the James Webb Space Telescope, the successor of the Hubble Space Telescope. And here are some business news headlines, fresh ones from December the 24th. Sri Lanka logs over 200 and, I'm sorry, over 150,000 international tourist arrivals in 2021. The United States Federal Reserve, it's the incumbent of a national or federal bank with 12 branch banks around the United States. Inflation measure hits a 39-year high in November. U.S. President Joe Biden has signed bills on forced labor in China and ALS research. The authoritarian Russian President Vladimir Putin puts blame on Germany for Europe's gas crisis. <clears throat> the crude Oil's consumption is expected to reach 99.53 million barrels per day, up from uh, in 2022, up from 96.2 million barrels per day in 2021. North Korea's economy is unlikely to face an imminent crisis despite uh, the economic sanctions and COVID. According to the World Bank, China's economic growth will slow sharply in 2022. Um, the British economy is barely growing. Uh, in just a year of Brexit, the uh, transition time ended on December the 31st, 2020. Indian firms take part in exhi exhibition in the neighboring Nepal to promote bilateral trade. Hundreds take to the streets of Kabul, Afghanistan, demanding to unfreeze Afghan's <coughs> reserves. <coughs> According to the latest Bloomberg News, uh, or now casts, the global economy is expanding just 0.7% in the fourth quarter of this year, that is from October to December 2021. The U.S. population growth is at its lowest rate uh, in the first year of COVID-19 pandemic. Turkey's hidden rate hike buys the, author, the authoritarian president, Mr. Tajik, uh, Recep Erdogan or Recep Tayyip Erdogan uh, time but raises risks. According to the US based Council on Foreign Relations, the 10 most significant world events this year include the following. This is from a blog post written by James M. Lindsay, a member of that organization or think tank, in other words, intellectual organization, and published on December the 15th, 2021. So he starts on a party positive note. 2021 as a year wasn't as tumultuous, 
involved. That, however, may be damning with faint praise. Yes, the past 12 months did bring some good news. Indeed, for a moment in early summer, it seemed that COVID-19 was in the rear view window or mirror. However, it wasn't. And 2021 brought other bad news. So then the uh, AUKUS deal, in other words, the defense deal between Australia, United Kingdom or Britain, uh, the former colonial and imperialist ruler of Australia, by the way, and United States. So on September the 15th, 2021, US President Joe Biden, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson jointly announced a new trilateral security partnership named AUKUS. Its most significant part was the US pledge to provide Australia with technology to build eight nuclear powered, but not nuclear armed submarines. <clears throat> the only other country to receive similar access to US technology is Britain, to cement the special transatlantic British American partnership, of course. And both countries, of course, belong to the US led military and defense alliance, NATO. The statement announcing the pact justified it as necessary to preserve security and stability by the Indo Pacific. Although none of the three political leaders mentioned <clears throat> China by name, AUKUS is widely seen as a response to growing Chinese assertiveness. Not surprisingly, the communist Chinese government denounced the pact as extremely responsible. Interestingly enough, one of the democratic Western European allies of the United States and Britain, France fumed because AUKUS terminated a 37 billion US dollar agreement and that had been made with Australia in 2016 to build a dozen diesel electric powered submarines. As a result, briefly, uh, France recalled its ambassadors uh, to Australia and the United States, a move without precedent on earlier example in the bilateral relations of France with either country. <clears throat> Biden, after this diplomatic move, admitted that the Pact could have been more skillfully announced. <clears throat> Meanwhile, France used the incident to press its case for strategic autonomy. That is the ability of the European Union, uh, the economic, financial, political and party military organization where most European countries belong, to act independently of the United States in world affairs. No wonder, because France was outside the NATO's command structure if I remember correctly, for some 42 years without leaving the alliance. And during the Cold War, France tried to chart out its own uh, course <clears throat> in the world affairs, having relatively close relations with the Soviet Union and a number of other communist countries, much to the disapproval of the United States. Uh, some see clear electoral considerations in these diplomatic games and overtures after all the unpopular uh, liberal and centrist French president Emmanuel Macron is running for a second term in <clears throat> April 2022 in all likelihood. He already has several major challengers, but it seems that he might win a second term, not because he's terrifically popular, because he isn't, but because his opponents are too controversial, especially two far-right presidential candidates, uh, Marine Le Pen of the National Rally, Le Rassemblement National, and then the controversial and polemical columnist Eric Zemmour. However, the latter still has to uh, gain the signatures of at least 500 elected officials in France to become an official candidate. <clears throat> Doubts remain about whether the new Australian submarines will ever be built because they will be costly to build and will not become operational for more than a dozen 
years, so only sometime in the 2030s. Then nine, migration crises test rich countries. The downturn, uh, the downturn in international migration flows in 2020, triggered by the ongoing pandemic, continued into 2021. Despite the overall reduction in the number of <clears throat> uh, would-be migrants around the world and asylum seekers and immigrants, there still were some migrant crises. By October 2021, the number of people entering the U.S. illegally had hit 1.7 million over the prior year, <clears throat> the highest number since 1960. COVID-19, economic hardship and political and natural events, the assassination of Haitian president Jovenel Moise, and the subsequent earthquake, which sent thousands of Haitians abroad, drove the surge from the Caribbean and Central America mostly. But so do, uh, too did the expectation that the Biden administration, which immediately, immediately stopped after Biden had become uh, the new U.S. president on January the 20th, 2021, the construction of new border walls uh, <clears throat> along the U.S. and fences along the U.S.-Mexican uh, border would be more welcoming to these migrants than the Trump administration. However, to stem the inflow of migrants, the Biden administration continued many of its predecessors' harsh anti-immigration policies. And where it didn't, the conservative-dominated U.S. Supreme Court ordered it to do so. Meanwhile, the European Union saw a 70% rise compared to 2020 in the number of people entering illegally, with critics arguing that the EU was failing its duty to help migrants. So they come mostly from North Africa and Western Asia. There also has been a surge in migrants crossing the English Channel from France and the now non-EU member uh, to the now non-EU member <clears throat> Britain. It triggered a diplomatic dispute between uh, France and Britain. Meanwhile, Belarus, uh, Europe's most authoritarian or autocratic country in Eastern Europe, encouraged migrants to cross its territory to enter three of its democratic neighbors, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland, in a bid to pressure the EU to end sanctions it imposed to protest the rigged uh, August 2020 Belarusian presidential election that, according to the official results, was won by the incumbent autocratic president Alexander or Alexander Lukashenko, who has been in power since 1994. <clears throat> Some 84 million people around the world have been forcibly displaced from their homes. Conflict, economic collapse, and climate change are likely to drive that number even higher. <clears throat> then eight, Iran's nuclear program advances. In February 2021, the Biden administration accepted an invitation from the European Union to rejoin negotiations. Diplomatic jockeying between Iran and the United States delayed the start of talks until April. <clears throat> an explosion at an Iranian nuclear facility in mid-April likely, according to this journalist, the result of Israeli sabotage prompted Iran to announce it had begun enriching uranium to 60% a level that has no civilian use, <clears throat> though it is below June, a hardline Muslim cleric, Mr. Ebrahim Raisi, won the Iranian presidential elections, and he immediately dampened speculation that an agreement was near, saying that the situation in Iran has changed through the people's vote. Negotiations finally resumed earlier in 2021 and restated its initial demand <clears throat> that the United States lift all the sanctions the Trump administration imposed. As 2021 comes to a close, the talks are on the verge of collapse, with Iran by some estimates just a month away from acquiring weapons-grade uranium and the Biden administration facing the question of what to do 
should diplomacy fail. Number seven, supply chains falter. So that term became a household term, at least in various Western countries in 2021. The pandemic exposed the downside of supply chains. Shortages and stoppages far away create shortages and stoppages at home. When the pandemic first hit in the spring of 2020, factories closed and many companies let inventories dwindle <clears throat> to avoid being struck or stuck with unsold goods. But when consumer demand surged in 2021 as vaccines became widely available, many companies found themselves short on parts and supplies. Shortages of shipping containers and backups at ports around the world further complicated matters. It didn't help that in March 2021, the container ship ever given run aground in the Suez Canal of Egypt, blocking one of the world's major waterways for a week and generating costs estimated to run 9.6 billion US dollars a day. The most attention grabbing shortage was in computer chips, especially those used in gaming consoles and car production. Other goods in short supply in 2021 included gasoline, palm oil, chicken, corn, chlorine, and hot dogs. Even when supplies were abundant, labor was often in short supply. <clears throat> then number six, the Taliban returned to power in Afghanistan. So Kabul, the Afghan capital, fell on August the 15th, trapping thousands of foreigners there. The U.S. launched a massive effort to evacuate stranded Americans by August the 31st. <coughs> the U.S. withdrawal, interestingly enough, ended on August the 30th, leaving behind over 100 U.S. citizens and up to 300,000 Afghans who possibly have qualified for expedited U.S. visas. While Biden called the withdrawal an extraordinary success, most Americans disagreed and his public approval ratings hit new lows. Five, Ethiopia civil war worsened. The Ethiopian Prime Minister, Mr. Abiy Ahmed, was awarded the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize. I just wonder if he should perhaps return the prize. Anyway, this... Uh, civil war, regional civil war, broke out in November 2020. <clears throat> when Prime Minister Ahmed ordered the Ethiopian military, military to attack the northern province of Tigray after forces linked to the Tigray People's Liberation Front looted a federal army base. So while Eritrea and Ethiopia are not fighting anymore, there is a civil war. In Ethiopia. Upon coming to power in 2018, Abiy drove or Ahmed drove the Tigray People's Liberation Front out of the ruling political party, ending its decades long domination of Ethiopian politics. Federal forces won important early victories, most notably by capturing Mekele, Tigray's capital. However, in June 2021, the TPLF forces recaptured Mekele. And by November, the TPLF and affiliated militias were advancing south towards Addis Ababa, or Addis Abeba, Ethiopia's capital, and east toward Djibouti, threatening to cut off the route that supplies Ethiopia with 95% of its maritime imports. The TPLF success raised the prospect that Ethiopia could collapse potentially triggering regional convulsions. And even if neither side uh, gains or decides victory, the consequences have been horrific. Some two million Ethiopians have been displaced or forced to leave their homes, and all the parties to the conflict have committed war crimes like ethnic cleansing, massacres, and gang rapes. So far, diplomacy has been, unfortunately, ineffective. 2022 could bring more heartache to a country that has seen more than its share. Not the least because of its, because of its frequent uh, famines. 
four. Unfortunately, despite the fact that many democratic elections were held in 2021, small d democratic ones, overall the global uh, democratic erosion has continued. And even in the United States, not the least because of the stubborn decision of former or the previous president, Donald Trump, to do virtually all he could to cling to power. Uh, around the turn of the year, there were even discussions on whether Trump should declare martial law uh, to remain in power. That, of course, would have been an unconstitutional act. Unfortunately, he did not do that. Some uh, journalists even raised the prospect of a possible nuclear war with Trump in the final minutes or fine on the final days of his term uh, launching nuclear missiles something that he theoretically could have done that uh, fear fortunately turned out to be unfounded in india the government of prime minister narendra modi cracked down on critics however late this year he did give in to the long protests of many indian farmers <clears throat> and cancelled those free trade policies which had <clears throat> allegedly worsened or free market policies which had allegedly worsened <clears throat> many Indian farmers' livelihood. <clears throat> the incumbent populist right-wing slash far-right Brazilian president Jair Bolsonaro who is running for re-election in <clears throat> September and possibly October 2022, attacked the legitimacy of his country's elections, prompting talk that democracy is possibly dying in Brazil. <clears throat> Fledgling democracies in Myanmar, Chad, Mali, Guinea, and Sudan all experienced a coup. Meanwhile, authoritarian governments continued to suppress dissent. Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny was imprisoned after returning from Germany to Russia. <clears throat> he had been treated in Germany after an attempt to poison him uh, as he was drinking tea during a flight. Neighboring Belarus diverted a passenger jet in order to arrest a prominent critic. China tightened its grip on Hong Kong. Um, Cuba arrested thousands of critics after the largest protests in its history. The number three, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., officially, or usually known as Joe Biden, became <clears throat> the new U.S. president. Repeatedly, he said in 2021, America is back. He moved to strengthen relations with the United States allies. He returned the country to the Paris Climate Agreement and the World Health Organization, renewed New START for five years, sought to revive the Iran nuclear deal, so far unsuccessfully, and ended U.S. support for offensive military operations in Yemen. And while these moves were popular overseas, um, as the year progressed, many foreign capitals openly wondered just how different and how sustainable Biden's foreign policies were. On critical issues like China and trade, Biden's policies differed from those of uh, Trump more in tone than in substance. He cancelled the Keystone XL pipeline, withdrew from Afghanistan, supported a waiver for intellectual property rights for vaccines, and the, created the controversial Australia-Britain-US deal without significant consultations with critical partners like France. The bungled Afghanistan withdrawal, the clumsy AUKUS rollout, and the slow pace of announcing ambassadors also raised doubts about the Biden administration's competence. With Biden's approval rating sinking at home and the odds improving that the Republicans will retake one or both houses of Congress in the November 2022 midterm elections, U.S. allies have to entertain the thought that Trump and America first might return to the White House in 2021, or then there's a possibility that even if Trump doesn't win, some other right-wing populist Republican could win. But I would assume that among the gray eminences, 
of the Republican Party, those who identify as liberal, moderate, centrist, or compassionately conservative Republicans, uh, there are uh, secret moves or not so secret moves to try to uh, join forces behind a sufficiently moderate candidate who could appeal, in addition to the Republican core base, uh, those voters who always vote for the Republican presidential candidates, to enough moderate Democrats and independents to be able to defeat Biden without, however, uh, producing a second Trump presidency, which could be just as disastrous and divisive and polarizing, if not even more so than the first one was. Two COVID-19 vaccines arrive as the virus mutates. The vaccines created to address the novel coronavirus may join the smallpox, polio, and measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines as major advances in saving lives and diminishing morbidity. The speed at which COVID-19 vaccines were developed in 2021 was stunning because historically vaccines took 10 to 15 years to develop. Now it seems that they take 10 to 15 months to develop. Well, this was my addition. The quickest any vaccine had been developed previously was the four years it took to create the mumps vaccine. COVID-19 vaccines were created in less than a year. In the first 11 months of 2021, that is from uh, January to November, of this year, over 7.4 billion vaccine doses were administered in 184 countries. And the world, according to the English language Wikipedia, contains 197 independent countries. <clears throat> However, the access to these vaccines is grossly unequal with Africa, once again getting the shortest end of the stick. And then there are those numerous uh, variants, including the Delta variant, first identified in December 2020 in India, that soon became the dominant strain around the world. And then the Omicron variant, uh, identified first in South Africa by the local scientists in November 2021. And within weeks, it had been found around the world. As 2021 ends, it is unclear whether Omicron presents a greater health threat or would send the global economy into another tailspin. <clears throat> what is clear is that over 5 million people globally and 800,000 Americans, according to the official figures, have died already from COVID-19. And then number one, countries fail the climate challenge climate change challenge again. A red, a cold red for humanity. That is how the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, a former Prime Minister of Portugal, by the way, described the United Nations uh, report released in August 2021 <clears throat> that concluded that humanity faces catastrophic climate change unless the emission of heat trapping gases is slashed. However, no reasonable person who critically and carefully follows the climate-related news around the world uh, needs to read the 4,000-page report to know that. Extreme weather dominated the news in 2021 as it has for much of the past decade. Record drought racked the U.S. Southwest. Record flooding devastated Belgium and Western Germany in Europe. Epic wildfires tore through Greece. So Belgium is in Western Europe, uh, Germany, Central Europe, Greece in Southeastern Europe. Late season monsoons ravaged India and Nepal. Climate optimists could find some developments to cheer in 2021 <clears throat> because US uh, President Biden committed the US to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement on his first day in office, January the 20th, 2021. China agreed in September to discontinue financing the coal-fired power plants overseas. And Iceland, a country in the North Atlantic and in Northern Europe, opened a facility to take carbon dioxide out of the air. At the COP26 meeting in Glasgow, Scotland, Britain, in November, 
countries pledged to take steps to address climate change, including uh, cutting uh, through cutting methane emissions. Pledges, however, are not yet accomplishments. Carbon officials emissions still jumped in 2021 as the global economy roared back to life. Even as US President Biden pushed Congress to address climate change in a major infrastructure bill, he asked the Organization for Petroleum Exporting Countries, which is dominated by the Middle Eastern Arab oil producing countries to increase oil production in a bid to lower gasoline prices. He was hardly the only world leader hoping to have his cake and eat it too. In other words, to make contradictory uh, demands <clears throat> or to have contradictory goals. But isn't that what many, if not most of us ordinary people do at least from time to time, right? The transition away from fossil fuels poses difficult choices. Mother nature, however, doesn't give credit for a degree of difficulty. And then other noteworthy stories. In January 2021, August, I'm sorry, Saudi Arabia agreed to reopen its border with Qatar, ending a three-year-long diplomatic crisis. In February 2021, the U.S. Senate acquitted the previous President Donald Trump in his second impeachment trial. In March, Pope Francis met in Iraq the Grand Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani. In April, a dispute over access to water triggered a clash on the Kyrgyzstan-Tajikistan border in Central Asia. A cyber attack orchestrated in May by Russian criminal hackers forced the closure of the colonial pipeline, disrupting the delivery of gasoline in eastern United States. In June, G7 leaders agreed to back a minimum global corporate tax rate of at least 15%. Lithuania agreed in July to allow Taiwan to open a de facto embassy in Vilnius. And China then downgraded relations with the Baltic country, obviously because China has this policy that it either uh, doesn't have diplomatic relations at all or doesn't have full diplomatic relations with the countries that dare to recognize Taiwan, which despite being, for all practical purposes, an in independent country here in southeastern and eastern Asia, uh, is still regarded by the communist <coughs> mainland China as a breakaway province. In September, the United States dropped a three-year-old request. I'm sorry. In August, the White House approved the sale of 750 million US dollars in arms to Taiwan, a decision quickly denounced by China. In September, the United States dropped a three-year-old request that Canada extradite a senior Chinese Huawei executive, prompting China to release two Canadian citizens it had arrested when the extradition warrant was first filed back in 2018. In October, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists released the Pandora Papers, <clears throat> which contained over 12 million documents showing how the wealthy and powerful use offshore accounts to evade taxes and hide money. In November, Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadimi survived a drone strike on his home. And a Russian military buildup near the Ukrainian border prompted <clears throat> US President Biden to warn Russian President Putin in a video call in December that the United States would respond with strong economic and other measures in the event that Russia invaded the Ukraine. Well, since this video has lasted already such a long time, I think it is wise to end it here, uh, except for one more <clears throat> set of news items. Uh, the recipients or receivers of the Nobel Prizes, which are awarded depending on the category, either in the Swedish capital Stockholm or the Norwegian capital Oslo, for Northern European, Scandinavian and Nordic countries. <clears throat>
the Nobel Prize in Physics for 2021, awarded to Japan's Tsukuro Manabe for the physical modeling of Earth's climate quantifying variability and reliably predicting global warming, and Germany's Klaus Hasselmann, and then there's the third receiver, Italy's Giorgio Parisi. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2021 awarded to Benjamin List for the development of asymmetric organo, organo catalysis and David W. C. Macmillan. The Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine awarded to David Julius and Ardem Potapulian for their discoveries of receptors for temperature and touch. The Nobel Prize in Literature awarded to Mr. Abdul Razak Gurna for his uncompromising and compassionate penetration of the effects of colonialism and the fate of the refugee in the Gulf between cultures and continents. The Nobel Peace Prize awarded jointly to two journalists standing up for the freedom of the press and expression, uh, Maria Ressa of the Philippines and Dmitry Andreyevich Muratov of Russia for their efforts to safeguard freedom of expression, which is a precondition for democracy and lasting peace. And then the uh, Swedish State Bank's prize in economic sciences in memory of the 19th century uh, Swedish inventor, millionaire and humanitarian Alfred Nobel, in whose honor these Nobel prizes have been named. David Card for his empirical contributions to labor economics. Joshua Angrist or Angrist uh, and Guido W. Imbens for their methodological contributions to the analysis of causal relationships. And I wish all of you a wonderful, blessed, healthy, a wonderful, blessed, encouraging, productive, and comforting and positively buy and see you soon.